For Criminal Media's Policy, I'm Tabi Shomulikai. ANC veteran Dr. Matthews Posa joins me to unpack his political memoir titled Witness to Power. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's a pleasure. Mm. Your memoirs follows your journey through the shifts in political power in the country, and you go back to the apartheid era and the negotiations towards liberation. So can you tell us about your involvement in the struggle against apartheid and what role you played in the negotiations in the 1990s? It's a long history. Even <laughs> as a student, I was active in Black Consciousness Movement, okay. then the United Democratic Front, and the ANC in the underground, carrying arms underground in the country. Mm -hmm. That led me into trouble. Then I was thrown out to exile. I went for training, mm -hmm. political and military training in East Germany. Came back, I was deployed in Mozambique. Then I was in charge of the border operations, which mm -hmm. meant smuggling men and women and material into the country to mm -hmm. come and fight. Bombs, AK-47, pistols to go through the border. Uh, that was my life until they pulled me out and said, mm -hmm. You are one of the first four to go home mm. to start the negotiation process. So indeed, I felt honored historically. And I had met uh, President Mandela in exile when he said, mm. he briefed me, I will be joining him. What a pleasure, what an honor in the history of your country. And we joined him, we started the negotiations from zero. Mm. To, to write the first agenda for Khrotoskir Minute, where the parties met. People who have been fighting and looking at each other through the sight of a gun. Now we're drinking wine from the same bottle. You know, we, we, we melted the situation to begin the talks. And you served as the first premier of Mpumalanga after the elections in 1994. But during Tabombeki's presidency, you came to be sidelined. So can you remind us about the period when you were accused of being involved in a plot to overthrow the president? Let me tell you, I enjoyed being the premier of Mpumalanga. We did great things. We ma make the N4 into double. We built a new airport, which is today so helpful internationally for the province. Built the biggest government complex in the country, in a province. And we did a Maputo corridor, which leads to the harbor of Maputo. And it was nice. The plot, the alleged plot by me, Tokyo, and Cyril Ramaphosa was uh, an act of paranoia. It did not exist. Uh, President Beggy uh, just feared his own shadow. And mm. in, in unleashed state resources for a year to investigate us and to only to find nothing. Mm. We've forgiven him, all of us. We've moved on. And you have expressed the view that over the past 15 years, the recalling of ANC presidents Tabombeki and Jacob Zuma, also the expelling of former ANC Youth League president Julius Malema, has intensified the factionalism within the party, and that has resulted in the split up parties breaking away from the ANC. So do you think the ANC is capable of recovering from this period of factionalism and fragmentation? I'm saying the ANC was murdered and buried in Pulukwane in 2007. Mm. That's where we made a choice and elected Zuma. And Tabo Mbeki lost and became, became very bitter. Mm -hmm. And later, of course, ignored the ANC and we were forced to remove him from power. That intensified the, the division. But those who supported him were very upset. Those who supported Zuma were upset when he was removed as deputy president. And this thing continued to haunt us until today. Malema uh, was expelled on some flimsy reason. Mm. I defended him in the first case and uh, we won. But later they caught him on really fluff. Mm. And then they had a grudge against him, they expelled him. And I, I, I spoke against it and I said, there is no dustbin for comrades. We should have kept Malema and disciplined him rather than expel him. But Lima was pleading for his membership of the NC. Mm. He was an honest member of the NC. We forced him out and hemorrhaged the youth. He left with the youth of the NC. Mm. Zuma now has moved to a point where he doesn't see eye to eye with, with, with the president. He has formed an MK party, yeah? and very strong in KZN, mm. and growing in other parts of the country. A phenomenon we did not predict all of us, but it's a reality today. It is the biggest opposition party in the in parliament. But that's the nature of democracy. And we must learn to live with democracy, different viewpoints in our society. And talking about the Bulukwani conference, in your book you recall that when you were ANC treasurer after the election at the Bulukwani conference in 2007, the Guptas were involved in donating money to the party and donated directly to President Jacob Zuma. 
I didn't say so in my book. I'm <laughs> saying in my book, it's there. I asked Tony Gupta to mm. contribute to the ANC in Durban at the NGC. He said, he laughed at me and said, no, we can't give you money. We already gave Baba 20 million rand. Mm -hmm. I never investigated if Zuma received it or not. So you are putting <laughs> salt. You want to make the story very spicy. <laughs> and do you regret not taking FEMA action to stamp out corruption when you were the ANC treasurer? In my treasury, there was no corruption. It was clean. We raised the biggest amount of money in the history of the ANC, billions. And everyone was paid every month. They got uh, bonuses, they got increases every year in terms of the market rates. Oh, we had fun. All the elections were run for cash. The centenary was during my time, unfortunately, I spent 250 million. I paid it cash. Mm -hmm. We had fun. There was no corruption. Corruption was in the ANC itself. It, it mm -hmm. reared its head from various points, both national, provincial, and local government. And it's still there even today. It's a cancer which is eating the ANC away. And why do you think that your nomination for ANC Deputy President at the ANC's National Conference in Mangaung in 2012 was unsuccessful? And also, what role do you think the infamous Guptas has in your election defeat? They used New Age and NN7 to campaign against me viciously mm. because I'd refuse to be their puppet. Mm. And I'm saying that in my book. And I'm very proud that uh, I walk away from the brown envelopes. And do you think formation of the MK party was a deliberate and calculated move by Jacob Zuma of course. to get back at Sarah Ramaphosa? Not at Sarah Ramaphosa. To form a new party which op he thinks is the real ANC. Because mm -hmm. if you listen to the tone of his voice, it keeps saying the ANC of Ramaphosa. Mm -hmm. As if Ramaphosa owns an ANC. So the MK is his ANC in court. Mm -hmm. You know, he's just saying the NC is not just lost cause. He thinks he can form a different party which espouses NC values. Whether or not that is true, time will tell. Time will tell. And why do you believe the ANC will decline further in the years ahead? Or do you think the party will be able to restore its support among the majority of South Africans? If the ANC does not act against corruption, does not prosecute who are, those who were pointed out by, by Zondo, does not continue to clean itself. Let me tell you, the studies which are in my hands right now say that the NC will get only 29 percent, between 29 and 26 percent. It's 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 polls. You know, the, before the 24 elections, the polls told me the NC will get about 44 percent. We got 40, so very close to that. It's the same polls and other international polls would say we'll get between 26 and 29. So the NC need to wake up and change course. It's easy to talk about renewal, but what do you do about renewal? That's the big issue. And lastly, Dr. Posa, why, what are you hoping to achieve with this book? You know what? There are people who were not born when we started our negotiations. Today, they're adults. They don't know what happened. For the first time, they've been told from someone who was inside what happened. And I think I'm going to be the only one. Many comrades of mine have told me they're going to write as well. They feel inspired to write. Mm -hmm. Now, those who were there, there are many things we are not aware of them. They could not explain what happened. But this book explains those things. Those who are not, who are not yet born will know where we came from. The book is a catechism for the future as well. Thanks a lot, Doctor. Thank you. That was Dr. Matthews Posler speaking to Criminal Media's Polity about Witness to Power.